13th. Now, what happens April 13th? First off, that is an important date. Don't miss it. Okay? April 13 is when classes reconvene unless they decide to change it up. Okay? Reconvene? Chuck, what's the deal? I've been on planet Mars for the last 48 hours. Okay? As of this coming Saturday, which is technically the start of spring break, okay, no face-to-face -face classes will meet at UC until April 13th. That means this class, your English class, your whatever class, will not meet again in class until April 13th. Awesome! That means there's no class, right? El Rongo. Now you know all my Spanish. Okay? What will happen is, Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I will post a video on Canvas. Okay? So what's going to happen is, on Monday, on Wednesday, and Friday, there will be a video. Now, I realize these videos are at the top of your viewing list and going to be on Netflix and all that stuff, making it easy for you to just naturally fall into them. Okay? So to help you fall into them, on Tuesday, Thursday, and then I'll cut you some slack, Sunday evening, there's a quiz due. It will be an online quiz in Canvas. It'll be like fill in the blank, multiple choice, that kind of stuff. On some of them, I will ask for a numeric answer. All numeric answers are to be accurate to three digits. Round them to three digits. Does that make sense? Okay. So round them all to three digits. Now, on these quizzes, am I going to have a little drone floating outside of everybody's window peering in on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday evening, which is I know when you're probably going to do these things? No. Okay. However, if you don't do them like here in class, you're not getting accurate feedback on how well you really understand the homework. Oh yeah, the homework will still be due, and the homework will be due at the time when the quiz is administered. So be really careful because there are going to be really tight time frames now. What will wind up happening is Monday, for example, I'm making this up, okay? Monday when class is resumed, there will be a video that will appear on section, I'm making this up, 3.7. Okay? At that same time, homework will post okay, on the MyLab stuff. That homework will be due, for example, at Tuesday at 2. The quiz will post Tuesday morning, and the quiz will be due, for example, at Tuesday at 3. Now, I know this is kind of a tight schedule, and I thought about, well, Chuck, be nice, and just cut him some slack, and, and I thought, cut him some slack, I know what's going to happen. April 12th, they're going to be saying, oh, weren't there some movies from Emin Actors class? Well, I guess I better watch them, and you'll binge watch three of them, and then just forget it, and hope that something good happens. Okay, and I thought, no, Chuck, I'm going to have to be the mean Chuck to make sure that things stay up because if I'm not whining and complaining, if I'm not the squeaky wheel, I'm not going to get the attention. Okay? I'm doing this because I don't want you to fall behind. Okay? I'm trying to protect you. I am concerned about you. I want to see you finish well. Right. Okay. Which, the only change up is you've always had three homeworks, just one quiz. Please. We can put it back like five minutes later if you want, but not much more than that. Okay? Now, what I'm also thinking is you're going to have extra time because you won't have all the transit time and the parking time and all of that. So there will be extra time in your schedule. And my first concern was, oh, crud, extra time. People usually kick back. Ah, I've got more time to get it done. And that's when I thought, ah, let's go this route. I'm trying to protect you. I want to see you get through the course. Okay? I want to see you be successful in here. So that this coming fall or something, maybe I'll get to see you in Math 1008 unless you decide you're going with somebody else. Yeah? I do have a question. Um, so when I always look on our calendars, because that's how I like, on campus, we look on calendars. That's how like, I keep track of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. And I always look at the date of the class that we have on campus. Hmm. I'm not sure why it's not posting. Uh, I will see if I can get something done on that. 
but be aware okay you know whether it's on that appears on that calendar or not every Monday Wednesday Friday a movie will appear every Tuesday Thursday and Sunday evening a quiz will be due and then on Tuesday Thursday and Sunday the homework for that particular section will be due as well now as far as help asking questions, things like that. I'm not sure what they're going to do with the math lab. They may close it. I'm not convinced that this WebEx stuff is going to be sustainable on the UC website. Okay, for webinars and things like that. Because if suddenly every class on campus, not here only, but main campus and Claremont and or medical and whatever, if they all try and suddenly jump on WebEx, what's it going to do to the system? It's going to crash. And it's going to crash mightily. So I am not going to say right now that I will do office hours by WebEx. We'll try it. I will send an announcement out letting you know, okay, let's try WebEx. We'll try it at these times. If it crashes, we'll figure out something else to do. Okay. What I may also do is to try and find on YouTube some videos that will provide you different approaches to the same material. No guarantees that I can find the stuff. Okay. Um, I may try working through some of the homework problems and make movies, things like that. Gosh, Chuck, this doesn't sound like you're getting a vacation. No, it's not a vacation. It's going to be more work. So, I'm going to do everything I can to get you guys help. After, that's right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's see here. You still have spring break, and break runs from March 13 to about the 20th, something like that. 18th, 19th, whatever it is. Yeah, I think tomorrow's the 12th. Okay. So you still have break through, so let's just be safe and say the 19th. Well, no, that would take it to a Saturday. Thanks. I'll have faith in you. Okay. That's still spring break. Okay. I will try to get the movies up a little bit earlier until I can. We'll try to get them up ahead of time as much as time allows. Okay. Uh, but videos will be posted Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Homeworks will be due Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday to give you a little breathing space and then those quizzes. Um, the good news is you wisely chose Friday for your test date. So that'll be said and done before we kick into this other mode. Okay. So that's good news. Test three, I always try to schedule in the last week of classes anyway. So I think that should give us a little breathing room there. Okay. We'll see what winds up happening. Um, on your syllabus, it lists that stuff. It lists when exams start and when the last week of classes is. Angel looks like she's circling something there. When, when are exams? Um, so for this class, it's the 27th. The 27th, okay. okay. Okay, so that's Monday, April 27th. Okay, so finals. Okay, thank you. The final in here is Monday, April 27th from 7.30 to 9.30. I'll caution you right now, be careful. Traffic is much different at 7.30 than it is at 8.30. Because there are lots of people that have to be to work at 8, so they're all on the road at 7.30. So if it usually takes you 15 minutes to get here, I'd leave 45 minutes. Because not only is there more traffic, but there might be a wreck. 7.30 to 9.30. I know, 7.30, really? That's usually when I'm already here. And I've driven an hour and done stuff at home. It's ridiculous how 
how late they start things. I agree. Okay, so this is for the 9 a.m. class. April 27. I'm not sure when my final is for the 10 o'clock class, but that doesn't apply to you. I'm just saying that because this movie will go out there. Are you all good? Does that make sense? And I really did. My first thought was, ah, well, I'll take it easy on that. I thought, no, that'll be a crash and burn. And I don't want you to crash and burn. You've been faithful and coming. You've been working hard. And I don't want to see bad things happen to you. So that's why I decided to take you this route. Okay. Now, if it starts to feel like it's getting too tight, I may back off some from this. I would put it in an announcement if I choose, if I'm seeing it. And yeah, this is, this is being too rough on me. What I may wind up doing is just backing it off to one quiz a week like what we have now. Have the homeworks due on like Thursday. I might back off to that. But I want to make sure that the videos get watched early in the week. And that's the only reason I was putting quizzes early in the week is to make sure that it isn't Thursday evening. And, oh crud, that's right. I got three movies to watch and three homeworks to do. And wow, this is going to be a late night. Okay, that doesn't work well. Okay, it just doesn't work. Questions. Are you okay? Some of you are sticker shocked because you didn't see the other stuff earlier. That's okay. It was a kind of an interesting way to start class. Okay. Today we're getting into section 3.5. 3.5, I don't know what you're going to do for a living. This is important to you. Because this affects your personal finances. This affects your retirement. This affects every loan you ever take out for a car, for a house. If you have student loans, we've already been down that road. If you have to get them, do not get more than what your first year's income is expected to be. And you can look that up online by just typing in entry-level salary. And then put in whatever it is that you're heading for. What do nurses start at? RNs. About 60000 Just to give you some idea. If you're looking at a job that starts at twenty-five or thirty, you can't live on it. I'm not trying to be rude, but you can't live on it. You're going to spend your evenings and weekends working at Lowe's or Walmart. Okay. So... Whether it be interest on a student loan, interest on a mortgage for a house, interest on a car loan, interest on your savings toward retirement, whatever it might be, it's going to be computed either using compound or continuous compounding. You may have never really heard much about these things before, which is fine. That's why you're here today. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to start on this, get as far as we can, and whatever we don't get done today, we'll finish up in a movie that you'll see on Monday after spring break's over. Okay? So we'll finish it up on whatever that movie is. Objectives, talk about compound interest. And there is a difference between compound interest and continuous compounding. Those are very different. There is also a third situation called simple interest. Simple interest is different again. When you walk into a credit union, I did not say bank because banks are not as friendly toward you as credit unions. I would encourage you to have your checking, savings, loans, all that through a credit union, not a bank. Okay. Banks are there to make money for the shareholders. Credit unions are there to make money for their members. But who are the members? You are. Credit union serves you because you own part of the company. A bank serves you because somebody else owns the company and they're trying to keep you happy enough that you'll
first let's talk about simple interest. Back up a little bit. You may have seen something on simple interest before. How does simple interest work? What simple interest means is that once a year, interest is computed. About the only place you see simple interest used anymore is when you buy government bonds. The government is the only one basically who pay, continues to pay simple interest. Everybody else does compound. Okay. With simple interest, you don't get anywhere near as much money back. Ah, sounds like the government. Okay. What winds up happening is, let's say you inherit ten thousand dollars and invest it in an account that pays three and a half percent annually. Annually means once a year. So Stephanie inherits $10,000 from some long-lost uncle up in Alaska. Okay, She gets $10,000, a dog sled, and 10 sled dogs. <laughs> I figured you might be okay with the dogs. <laughs> okay, The $10,000, she says, geez, i got to start getting some money together to feed these dogs. Ten dogs is a lot to feed. Okay? So she puts it into account that pays three and a half percent annually. And the question is that's posed here, over ten years, how much will you receive? Well let's back it up a little bit, and before we look at ten years, let's look at in one year. How much is Stephanie going to get in the way of interest? Because her $10,000 should still be there, plus there should be extra money, shouldn't there? The way you figure out in one year is you take the $10,000 and you multiply it by the rate. But remember, the rate needs to be changed from a percent back to a decimal. So you slide the decimal two places. And when you slide it two places, you're going to get 0 0.035 times 10,000. Does that make sense? Which means that when she comes back or checks this account a year later, the account will have added $350 in interest. Now that sounds pretty good. I mean, it's 350 bucks, and what did you have to do to earn that 350 bucks? Just leave the money sit in the bank account, or in the treasury bill, or whatever it is. Bond if you're buying it from a city. Just let it sit there for a year, and ta-da! They give you 350 dollars for leaving your 10,000 there. How can they afford to give you 350 bucks back? If they just take that $10,000, put it back in the safe, lock it up, how can they afford to a year later hand you your $10,000 plus another $350? That's right. Yeah. So when Stephanie and Angel and Faith and around the room, when you take and you put money into the credit union, that money doesn't sit there in a the safe. They loan it out. They loan it out for home improvements, for mortgages, for cars, for all kinds of stuff. They make other kinds of loans, and those other loans are at higher rates than the 3.5%. And the difference, so for example, if they loan it out at 6%, and you get 3.5%, how much money do they make on that? 2.5%. And what they're depending on is a whole lot of money going through that they're getting 2.5% of to pay for the building, to pay the people who work there, to pay the utilities, you know, all the stuff that you get in the way of support. That's how they pay for all that stuff. Okay. So at the end of the year, Stephanie comes back. She's got 350 bucks there that she didn't have before. 
if she leaves that there for 10 years, the way you figure out the total amount of interest is, here's how simple interest works, every year she's going to get 350 bucks. And if you leave it there for 10 years, how much interest will she get in 10 years? Well, it'll be the 10,000 times the 0.035. Oh, wait a minute. This is the $350 a year, isn't it? There's the $350 she gets each year, but if she leaves it there for 10 years, we multiply it by 10, and the interest paid is $3,500. Which means that if she lets it sit there for 10 years, when she returns, not only will they give her back her $10,000 if she wants it, but they'll throw in an extra how much? An extra $3,500. Which, wow. Hmm. It's an extra $3,000 I wouldn't have had if I just took it and buried it in a can in the backyard. That gets to be a lot of money, doesn't it? Okay, back before computers, all the banks and everybody worked on simple interest because it was too complicated. Think about all the accounts a bank or a credit union has. Could you imagine having to figure out every single one of those by hand? That was a lot of work. Huge amount of work. Okay? When computers started to work their way into the banking world and the business world, it was easier to do these computations because now a machine did it instead of somebody sitting there all day with a pencil and an adding machine. They didn't have calculators like this. They had little machines that would add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Woo dogers, those were cutting edge. Okay? As computers came in, it was simpler to do computations and it was simpler slash faster to do more complicated computations Simpler, faster means it was also much cheaper to do it that way. Now, if the place where you have your money, bank, credit union, whatever it is, finds that they can now do all these computations on every single account cheaper, they can do one of two things. They can keep all the money for themselves, or they can say, you know what, I can get more money if I can make my stuff more competitive than the bank down the street. If the bank down the street is offering simple interest 3.5% and you come up and you say, I'm going to pay interest quarterly. First off, the first part of quarterly is court. That's Latin for what? Four, yeah, you're on it. Like four quarts in a gallon. Okay. Instead of paying interest once a year, we're going to pay it four times a year. That didn't mean that they gave you $350 four times a year. What it meant was they would take Stephanie's $10,000, multiply it by the 0 0.035, then they would multiply it by one-fourth because it's been one-fourth of a year, hadn't it? Okay, so if we do that, we have our 350, and we get, well, gosh, Chuck, that doesn't look like much of a deal to me. The other place is giving me 350. It's just giving me 87.50. How is this better? That's just three months in, isn't it? Now, catch this. The second quarter is now over. How much money is in Stephanie's bank account now? That's right. Her bank account has $10,087.50. The interest from the first quarter. What they wind up doing is they say, okie dokie, we'll do the 0.035 times a fourth. So we're going to do the 10,087.5 times 0 0.035 divided by 4 equals. And this time the interest they pay is $88.27. Notice the interest this term. How does it compare?
compared to the previous term. It's more, isn't it? It's more because, because of why? That's right. You know what they're doing this quarter? They're paying you interest on the interest they gave you last quarter. So you're getting interest on your interest. Do you see how that builds? Okay, so you have 10,087.50, and now they add in another 88.27. And when it comes time for the next round, you have $10,175.77. Does that make sense? This is going to occur sometime around September. They're going to multiply it by the 0 .035, and this is only for a fourth of the year, so we've got that. So we're going to take 0 .035 times your new balance, divided by 4 equals Sign up for that one? Yeah, me either. 
there is an easier way to do this, a faster way to do this. Do you see that formula there, A equals? The way we're going to use this formula is the amount that Stephanie will have in 10 years. That isn't A times 10. That's the amount in 10 years is equal to P. Now, oftentimes this is written as P sub 0. P sub 0 is how much did you start with? Well, that's $10,000 times 1 plus now you may forget at some point what these different things are. You'll need to know them for the quiz test and whatever else is coming up. The quiz won't be Friday. This won't be on Friday's test, but it will be on the quiz the week after spring break. Oh, that's right. Okay. The rate is going to be 0 0.035. the number of times a year that interest is compounded. If it's quarterly, it's going to be compounded how many times? Four. Now, notice this is in the exponent. It's not times it, it's in the exponent. N is four times the number of years is ten. Okay, so now we've got this mess got to fit it into your calculator somehow. I would suggest that you go with, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Start inside the parentheses. Start with the division. So, and you may want to try this with me. It's going to be 0 0.035 divided by 4 equals. What's next in the line of things to do? Plus 1. So you just press plus 1. And now your calculator should show 1.00875. The next thing to do, let's see, please parentheses, excuse is exponents. The exponent is next, and we're going to raise it to what power? The 40th power. Okay? So what you can do on your calculator is... What's in the parentheses is going to be 1.00875. On your calculator, you do raise to the 40th power. Okay. Equals. Your calculator may work a little bit differently. The number you should get back is going to be 1.41690. Everybody get that? Is that working? Okay, so now we've got the stuff inside of the parentheses done, as well as apply the exponent. What's next in the list to do? Multiply by 10,000. And when you multiply this times 10,000, you're going to wind up with 14,000. paid on interest, 
That is what is called compound interest. That's where the word compound and compound interest comes from. So they got their computer, they start running things quarterly. Well, this bank says crud. They're taking all the money out of here and moving it down the road. We better get a computer too. So they get a computer, and instead of offering quarterly, you know what they offer? Monthly. Now, if it's monthly, what's N going to be? How many months are there in a year? Twelve. Good. Sometimes people don't know. Okay? So, they start order offering monthly. Hey, figure out how much they're going to pay if it's monthly. This bank, in 10 years, will give you $14,169. If the bank over in the quarter now says, hey, dude, they're only paying you four times a year, we'll pay you every single month. Obviously, that's going to add up to more money, isn't it? How much more? We'll go get them. You can plug the numbers in. We're still doing the 10000 for the start value. The interest rate is 3.5%. N is going to change to 12, but T is still going to be 10 years. Does that make sense to everybody? Let's see here. What power are you going to raise it to this time? 120th power. I'm going to erase this stuff to the left. I'm guessing you've got that taken care of. I need a little more room to work on this slide. Except this year it's 366. Yeah. Leap year. Everything would stay the same except N would change to 365 or 366 depending on the year. Now, would it increase the amount that you get by a whole lot more or just a little bit more? Just a little bit more. It'll bounce at a few more bucks. But if you are starting a new account, are you more comfortable going there at 3.5% monthly or here at 3.5% daily? 
Daily sounds better, doesn't it? Mathematically, not a huge difference, but daily sounds better. Okay? Do you buy that? It's a good advertising thing. Okay. We've done a whole bunch of this. Okay, yeah. I'll tell you what, I want to do one more thing here and then we'll come back and get these. What wound up happening is daily did sound better. And the monthly folks found themselves saying, uh-oh, what do we do now to get business? Because uh, daily sounds better than monthly, and the best we can do is daily. We can't outdo them. You can. You can take it a step further. How about if every second of every hour of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year, you're getting your interest? Angels here, yeah, I'll go with that. That is what is called continuous. Continuous means you're always getting interest on this money, aren't you? Always. Always, always, always. Every second, boom, they've added more. Whoops, no second, they've added more. Whoops, no second, they've added more. You get the idea. They're constantly putting more money into your account. Now, is it huge amounts of money? No. But you saw the other day with the rice example, you start out with one, you go to two, you go to four. By the time you get to the far end of the checkerboard, you've got more rice than even exists. This doesn't grow quite that fast. Okay. But what winds up happening is if you have continuous compounding, you go to a different formula. You go to this formula. E is a value a button on your calculator. It's usually associated with the LN button and oftentimes it'll be second. So what will happen is you'll have a key that shows LN and above it printed on the face of the calculator itself it'll say E to the X. To get to that you press second and then you press that key. If we were going to, well, not if, let's go ahead and let's run this exact same example, the $10,000 that Stephanie inherited. E, the interest rate is 0 0.035 times the number of years is still 10. Make sure you can do this one on your calculator. Where you're going to start out here is, are you going to take 10,000 times E, or are you going to do the exponent first? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The excuse, the exponent goes first. So you go e to the x, you get your e to the x. The rate is going to be 0 0.035 times 10 years. I'm going to close the parentheses, and I get 1.419. Is that about what you got? You take this now times 10,000. And what this is going to give you then is $14,190.68. Okay? So it's $14,190.68. If you take a look at monthly, look at here, we're now getting $14,190.68 if we do it continuous. You're getting an extra six and a half bucks, aren't you? Yes, that's over 10 years. Yes, it's about 65 cents a year, but it's an extra six and a half bucks. If there were six and a half dollars laying on the floor, would you just kind of kick it and whatever, it's not worth bending over for that? Or would you go after it? Yeah, you'd probably be, okay, look like something I've seen out on the ice in a hockey game for six and a half bucks. Does it make sense how this compound interest works? There are different types of compound interest. There is simple, there is compound. Now you got to be careful because they use different equations. Compound interest is this equation right there. Got to be familiar with that one. 
Then there is also continuous compounding, which is this equation. Are you okay? Is this making sense? Okay. Interest rates are pretty low right now. We're in shopping for a truck, and I think I mentioned to you, we've got the money for the truck, but it's tied up in mutual funds. But what's happened to the stock market lately? It's going down because of the big scare over the coronavirus. I don't know how bad it'll get or not get or whatever. I guess we'll just find out. But anyway, the stock market's gone down, so what's happened to the value of my mutual funds? They've gone down. So what I'm looking at doing is in buying a truck, I'm going to take out a loan from our credit union. Well, dude, that's going to cost you interest. It will, but it'll cost me less money than cashing in those mutual funds. Okay? I was really impressed. Do you know how much they're offering us a car loan at? Two and a half percent. That's sweet. That's basically nothing, isn't it? Now, this interest rate depends on several things. What else does this interest rate that they're going to quote you depend on? Hmm? How many years is the loan? How old is the car? How much money? They're going to ask, do they care anything about me? Yeah, they do. They want to know things like, um, how much money do you have in the bank? Or the credit union or whatever? Okay. What is your credit history like? And what's the one number they use to describe your credit history? Your credit score? I know the loan officer. We, I pop in. She laughs. We talk. And we finally get around to, what are you in here for, Chuck? And I explained to her, we've got our money in mutual funds. She said, yeah, and you're not going to touch that, right? I said, no way. I'm not touching that. That's why I'm talking to you. So she looks up our credit score, or my credit score. And she laughs, and she says, really, Chuck? Is that good or bad? Okay, what's the best you can get on a credit score? 850. So, part of what happens on this interest rate is your credit score, and all a credit score is telling the bank or the credit union, how likely are we really to get this money back from Chuck? If your score is low, that means uh, we're not sure we're going to get this money back, so we're going to charge you a whole lot along the way, so that if suddenly if Chuck decides, ah, I'm done paying, I wrecked the truck, I'm not going to pay any more on it, they can come tow it, I don't care. Okay? They know that's not going to happen, so they can afford a lower rate. Now, well, am I saying this to say, woo-woo, look at Chuck? No, what I'm telling you is be sure to pay your bills on time, on time, and on time. Credit card, should you have a bunch of money out on those? No, always pay off the full amount every month. And if you can't pay off the full amount at the month, you know what that means? You can't afford it, that's right. And if you can't afford it, should you buy it? No, because you can't afford it. Okay, be careful. If you go in for a loan and you got $15,000 on credit cards and you're late on paying your utility bill, your water bill, whatever, what's going to happen to that interest rate? Up, up, and away, or they're just going to say, sorry, we can't deal business with you. There's the door. Close it on your way out. Okay? So be real careful. And it starts with small things, like avoiding carrying a balance on credit cards. Like paying whatever bills it is that you do have on time. Whether it's UC or whatever it is. It starts with little things. And it adds up to big things. Now, there is one more thing that we need to take a look at here. Okay. It's something called a growth factor. We've already talked about growth factors, Chuck. I don't know why you're bothering with that. We've talked about those, haven't we? We've talked about them several times. Like if you're considering a percent increase, you can compute a growth factor, multiply the number by that, and ta-da, you've got it. We've also talked about decay factors. You really don't want decay factors with your savings. You want growth factors. 
okay? And what this growth factor is going to do, and we'll talk about how to compute it, it's going to lead us to something called an effective yield. It is very difficult sometimes to decide where you want to do business financially because this loan institution down here is offering this rate for this many months, compounded monthly, quarterly, whatever. You come over here, they've got a different deal. Okay? Different number of months, different interest rate, da da da. This one might actually have a lower interest rate in more months. Which one are you better going with? A slightly higher interest rate in less months or a lower interest rate in more months? Hard to tell. The higher interest rate isn't going to be around as long because you're going to pay it off sooner, aren't you? The lower interest rate is going to be around longer because if you don't make some early payments, it's going to be around a long time. What the effective yield does is it takes into consideration, see this in, how many times things are being paid, and the interest rate, or how many times things are being compounded, and what are they charging you. This effective yield is a number you can come back to and compare what that business is offering you compared to what this business is offering you. This is the number you need to compare different offers. Because this number brings them all back to a common scale. Okay? It's kind of interesting trying to buy a truck. When you get into heavy duty trucks, you can buy, you've got a choice of about five different engines, two or three different transmissions, plus a zillion other things. What type of tow package, what type of hitch, what type of... I mean, there's a zillion things involved, and it's hard to boil it down. Well, when you go in for a loan, it can be hard to boil it down with all the things that are going on. This boils it down for you and makes it easier to see what's actually going on. We'll start with this in the first movie that you're going to see after spring break. Hey, Friday for the test, be sure you bring your calculator and make sure it has good batteries in it. Okay, folks, I'll see you all Friday. I hope you have a good day.